God Prince is the story of 60 years of building community through Christian education. Each chapter highlights God's faithfulness to us throughout the decades. Join us as we journey down memory lane, reflecting on our past, celebrating our present, and looking forward into our future, reminding ourselves of the value of Christian education. Good evening. My name is John Sawatsky. I'm principal at Calvin Christian Elementary Campus. I began this job about three years ago and it's been a wonderful community to get to be a part of. We have three children of our own and three grandchildren by now and we grew up in North Caledonan for many years. I still remember when Sutton itself was a gravel road with only a single house on it. I also remember the railway bridge going across Henderson where a pizza hut is now. And I remember how far it was to travel from McKay Street, where I was born, all the way to Eaton's downtown to see the Christmas window display. Well, things certainly have changed. I turned 60 last year, and Calvin Christian School is turning 60 as well. Tonight, we will focus on some of that history and how God has led this community over the past six decades. Welcome to our 60th anniversary fundraising program. We are so happy you've joined us tonight. Today, we acknowledge that our school is located on Treaty 1 territory, which consists of the traditional homeland of the Métis Nation, as well as that of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples. Through this declaration, we seek to demonstrate respect for the treaties that were made on these territories, acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and dedicate ourselves to move forward with Indigenous communities in a spirit of partnership and reconciliation. Hello, on behalf of the Board of Directors of Calvin Christian Schools, we want to welcome you here. Though the format of our banquet and our 60th anniversary celebration have had to change, we're still very excited to get to share in this occasion with you in community. We want to extend a special thank you to the numerous volunteers, staff, and alumni that have given of their time and efforts in order to bring this event to you. We hope that the videos you'll be viewing will allow you an opportunity to see the great work that has been taking place at Calvin Christian over the last 60 years. We're excited to join you in unity and share in this common purpose of raising funds for the school and help us do the work that God is calling us to do in our community. Thank you, we hope you enjoy the event.
Good evening. Just a couple of items before we proceed with the program. Number one, during tonight's program there will be some short clips of an art piece being completed by our senior high art teacher Tim Taves. The completed piece, entitled Northern Lights, is one of the silent auction items that you're invited to bid on. Stay tuned until the end of the program to see how beautiful it is. Secondly, remember that the silent auction will close at 10 this evening. Be sure to get your bid in for some of the amazing pieces of art and donated prizes. Winners of the silent auction will be notified by email and will be listed on the Elevate Auction website. Go to the Elevate Auctions website, elevateauction.com, and click on the Calvin Christian School 60th Anniversary to view and bid on the prizes. Finally, next up are two of our grade 12 students, Karina Reimer and Nathan Brown. Both of these students have attended Calvin since kindergarten, have been involved in multiple aspects of school life and school leadership, and are eager to share their experiences and joys of attending Calvin. Sit back and enjoy their contribution to our program. Hello, my name is Karina Reimer. And my name is Nathan Brown. We are both grade 12 students at Calvin Christian Collegiate. Both of us has attend Calvin since kindergarten, and we have grown very much academically and spiritually during that time. We enjoy the small dynamic of Calvin Christian as we are able to be close with our classmates. This has allowed us to grow great relationships and build long-lasting friendships. It has enabled us to be vulnerable and shaped into who we are called to be, ambassadors of Christ. We have been blessed with great teachers at Calvin, both at the elementary as well as the collegiate campus. At the elementary, our teachers helped us develop attitudes of good behavior in the classroom and gave us a solid foundation of education to set us up for success and prepare, prepare us for older grades when the workload got heavier. Calvin Christian School gave us an opportunity to grow closer to God through fun worship songs and assemblies or morning devotions with our class. In the intermediate grades, we began to embrace worshiping God during morning chapels with the older students. We were given the environment to build our relationships with God on a personal level through more focused worship and learning. I Love to Read Month was an exciting time in the school with the constant anticipation of stopping, dropping, and reading as soon as the theme songs of the month would turn on. Midway through February, all the students would pack into the buses and head over to the collegiate campus to read books with the other students. This didn't seem like a big deal at the time, but it grew a wider sense of identity of what it meant to be a Calvin Christian student. With these visits, we were able to grow unity between the campuses, as these were some of the few times students would come to the collegiate before grade seven. These visits would give them the chance to familiarize themselves with the school and the atmosphere. Grade six was a year full of growth for each of us. This being our last year at the elementary brought forward independence in completing our work and in our understanding and development of our learning style. Calvin Cup, the annual hockey tournament, provided grade 6 students with key roles in organizing and running the tournament, taking stats, refereeing games, setup and takedown of nets, and equipment. I constantly checked the schedule and listened to the announcements to know when I would play next. Parents were also invited to come and watch the 25-minute intense floor hockey games. Activities such as Calvin Cup, patrols, and field day helped us establish community with our classmates and we were taught to be aware of our actions and how we were role models for the younger students. Grade 6 also helped us understand and appreciate the importance of having a strong personal faith in the Lord. The Collegiate Campus is where we really began embracing our life values and priorities. As we move on to maturity with Christ, many students have developed similar values and beliefs while maintaining individuality and keeping their relationships with God and others very personal. CCC has been a great environment for students to work toward that common goal. Myself and others are able to freely express our beliefs with our classmates openly and are able to discuss and debate different topics and ideas with the true intention of sharpening each other like iron sharpens iron. The small school aspect of the collegiate has allowed for community building. Being in a community of believers is very important when it comes to pursuing a life that God has set before us. Being in an all-in relationship with our Savior is almost impossible by ourselves. We need others to challenge us, encourage us, help us to continue on and keep pursuing Christ. The teachers at Calvin Christian are true role models. Their patience and humility help create an atmosphere for us to engage in our learning. 
As I walk the halls of my school, I see teachers who have helped me grow into who I am today. The relationships that are built here between the teachers and students are based on the joy found in Christ. I can see God displayed through my teachers not only in their efforts to teach us the material, but also in their unselfish care for us personally. They get to know us and build a personal relationship that helps enable us to connect with what we are learning. Our teachers help give us the opportunity to become the best that we can be. Calvin has given us a chance to lead in word and example among our peers. To be an influence on someone is to lead, and we are given that opportunity every day. Whether it's in class, sports, student council, chapel, or other areas, every student is given leadership opportunities that they can take and apply later in life. At Calvin, you probably won't see many new faces, which some might see as a downside to our school. But I believe it is quite the opposite. I'm definitely not best friends with absolutely everybody in my grade, but I know parts of everyone's lives, both in and outside of my grade. It might seem trivial to be able to know the first and last name of every single student from your school, but it really helps in building a relationship with that person. As a small school, you can often see someone in the hallway and ask how their day or week has been and get an answer that will help you build a relationship with them. Instead of asking them something unimportant and then they disappear into a massive crowd of students never to be seen again, you get to know them. You get an idea of their likes, dislikes, and overall personality. We are both very involved in the athletics program at Calvin. The opportunities to engage in physical activity and worship God is definitely a highlight for me. Whether it is volleyball, basketball, soccer, badminton, the list goes on. With the COVID pandemic, the past year has truly impacted our sporting pursuits. That being said, there are many great ways we could show God's love through our actions and sportsmanship at Calvin. I've had a great experience growing up with dedicated coaches who have taught us to be hard workers and to display good sportsmanship. With their help, our sports teams have been very successful and a positive environment to have fun playing with your best friends. Other school activities we were able to engage in were concert band, jazz band, the yearbook team, and art class, which featured an annual art show in the spring. The downstairs hallway at the Collegiate is filled with many different styles of artwork covering the walls. Each one of these areas of opportunity give us a chance to display God's creativity shown through us. Another area of opportunity we can experience through Calvin is our mission trips. In grade 11, we have the Mexico mission trip, which is focused on building houses for people who simply own close to nothing. We also have the inner city experience where the grade 12 spend time serving in downtown Winnipeg. These are great ways to be a difference maker in God's world by serving the less fortunate. Opportunities such as the impact trips provide students with the chance to look past themselves and focus on the bigger picture of serving others and living a life God calls them to. This is our perspective on Calvin Christian and how the school has impacted our lives. We are very thankful to have been able to attend Calvin and for the opportunity to speak to you today. Thank you. God Prince. In Psalm 8, the psalmist tells us to consider the heavens and the work of God's fingers. In this video, students and staff speak to their experiences in seeing and relating God's story both in and outside the classroom. One thing I love about teaching grade one is the sense of wonder that the students bring with them every day. They are excited to learn, they're excited to make discoveries about creation and nature and it's fun to be able to say isn't it amazing that God did it that way isn't it amazing that how he created these things I hope that they will take this sense of wonder with them as they go on from here that they will continue to love to learn and they will continue to be in awe of God and all the things that he's made I see God's fingerprint in my teacher because she is kind to me and if anyone has a problem, she tries to fix it very fast to make sure it's okay. Mr. Allen is funny and he's very kind and he helps me with my work. I hope that my students can see that God's fingerprint is on all things through assignments and discussions and projects. For example, when we learn magnets in science, uh, one of the projects is uh, learning about migration and my students will often learn that the earth is a giant magnet and that God uses the magnetic field of the earth to help birds and fish and, uh, 
and insects to migrate. Nothing is left to chance. We have an all-knowing and all-loving God. I can see God's fingerprints in a project that we did. We did a project where we could see God's fingerprints in how we, in our friends, in our family, and that we're each unique and that we should be thankful that we are each one fearfully and wonderfully made. You had to make a poem about your name and each letter in your name represents um, a sentence about you. And the T is for talented because I can do things that lots of people in the world can't do. And the A is awesome and amazing because I try and be awesome and amazing to all of my friends so that they want to be my friends and not just people who aren't my friends um, to pe so that they will want to be my friend. And then L is loving because if you don't be loving to people then they will want to play with you and you can get left out. And I is I love to cartwheel because cartwheeling is one of my favorite talents to do. And the A is a bucket filler because in my class we talk about um, trying to fill people's buckets and what that means is um, every everyone <laughs> like has an invisible bucket over their head and when you do something that makes them happy, then water fills up in their bucket. I see God's fingerprints in many different ways. I see them in our teachers and even the friends around the school. I mostly see them in the teachers when they relate normal subjects like social studies and science to the Bible and to a spiritual lesson. Community and Christ Essential in my classroom. Whether we are discussing mental well-being in SLG, discussing how we can be justice seekers and creation enjoyers in our water systems unit in science, or raising money for those in need in our community. Students explore by gathering facts, stories, and what God has to say. Next, they experience by taking what they've learned and going forth and doing something about it. Finally, they evaluate how they were able to make a difference under the Lordship of Christ within their community. I built this plane for art class. It took a long time to finish because of part issues and lack of supplies. I chose to build a plane because I thought it would look neat and maybe attract us to some of the school members. Here are some quotes I found on talk, that talk about our teachers and teaching, and our mascot is an eagle. Together we may give our children the roots to grow and the wings to fly. Children are born with wings. Teachers teach them how to fly. We saw the wonder of God through everyone who donated because they were generous and there was no incentive in giving. We also saw the wonder of God through our classmates because of how they were generous and they were able to go big for this project. The fact that we as a small school were able to raise over $1,000 was a wonder in itself too. Shopping for the toys was a new experience because usually when you go shopping, you just go shopping for yourself. But buying the gifts for the kids was really great because it showed us how much we were thinking about others. And seeing our classmates thoughtfully pick out gifts for the kids it was really cool to see and see how he thought about others. How is sport under the Lordship of Christ? First, I think it's an area where we can practice and develop characteristics of being good Christ followers. We are called to persevere in our faith. Are there more moments in sport where we have to persevere? Absolutely. We are called to honor all parts of the body of Christ. On a team, not everyone will be the starting setter. Not every player will score 30 points a game, but at Calvin, we give importance to each member of our teams. One of the highlights of my basketball season this year was watching my older, more experienced players work patiently with a younger player, helping him grow in his skills. In this way, we also learn to honor one another another command that's been given to us. It's amazing and to wonder of how complex God made us in our bodies as we learned in our science unit on cells. 
God made the human heart, and if he didn't make it or any of our organ systems, we would not be able to function. The same is with working with others. We all have different talents that, we don't, that others don't have, which is why our project came out the way it does. The three of us who made this project used to play basketball together, which is why we wanted to make it a sports theme. Sports brings people together, which is another wonder of God's handiwork. How we win and lose is also incredibly important as Christ followers. As we watch pro sports, we see countless examples of disregard for opponents and officials. But we're called to be different. So as we try our best out on the floor, we never do so at the expense of the dignity of other players or officials. In this way, we hope that God's fingerprint on us is evident to our opponents. Outdoor education provides limitless opportunity to not only see God's fingerprint on our earth, but also to explore, experience, and evaluate His Lordship over all things. Why do we like to see mountains or a sunset? To stumble across wildlife on a hike, or to hold a big fish in our hands that we've caught? It's to experience that sense of awe. I read an article recently that said, being in nature encourages a feeling of awe a sense of being small in the presence of something bigger than yourself. We know that this feeling of awe is to draw us into praise and adoration of the wonderful creative force that God is. So in Outdoor Ed, students have a chance to direct their awe not just to the creation, but ultimately to the Creator. project on a tree and it reminds me that ever since kindergarten there is a seed planted in me and through the years the school, my church and my family have helped me grow in my faith. God has put these people in my life so my faith can grow and by the end of grade six I would like my faith to look like a tree. I have the pleasure of introducing you to a graduate from Calvin Christian's very first grade 12 graduating class from 2005. We opened up the high school in 2002 with students from grade seven to 10. Phoebe Thiessen and her classmates became our first grade 10 students, then grade 11 students, and then of course our grade 12 students graduating from our high school program. She and the class were our guinea pigs and I have great memories of planning how to transport 28 grade 10 students without a budget for transportation on Winnipeg Transit using our lunch hour to go bowling as an alternative phys ed activity and arrive back to school on time for the next class. Much of our conditioning for phys ed that year was actually running to and from the bus stop. Phoebe was one of the leaders in that class that pioneered the high school. She had a positive voice and knew how to respectfully discuss issues or concerns with her teachers and her peers. She worked hard in her studies and on the volleyball court. She and I had a regular lunch date. We spent many lunch hours discussing how to make a difference, and sometimes we just chatted about the events of the week. Phoebe was a missionary kid in Burkina Faso, a small country in West Africa. She returned to Burkina Faso after grade 12 and homeschooled missionary kids. She actually taught our very own Mr. Caleb Thiessen that year as he was a missionary kid in that very same place. Upon Phoebe's return to Winnipeg, she completed her undergraduate degree at the University of Winnipeg, a Bachelor of Science Honors program in biology and biochemistry. 
She went on to attend the Max Rady College of Medicine at the University of Manitoba and graduated with her medical doctor degree in 2016. She completed a family medicine residency in northern Manitoba and downtown Winnipeg from 2016 to 2018, completing her training in 2018. She is currently working in Selkirk, practicing as a family physician in a clinic, as well as doing low-risk obstetrics and part-time work in northern Manitoba and Norway House every few months. I am pleased to introduce you to Dr. Phoebe Thiessen. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Phoebe Thiessen and I attended Calvin Christian School and Collegiate from 2001 to 2005 and had the privilege of graduating from Calvin Christian Collegiate in 2005 uh, with the first graduating class from the Collegiate. Over a year ago now, Mr. Vanderkratz approached me and asked if I would be willing to speak at Calvin's uh, fundraising banquet uh, that was supposed to be held in March of 2020 with the theme, God Prints, God's Fingerprint on All Things. And I was excited to be there. Uh, I had prepared what I was going to say that day, uh, excited to connect with uh, previous staff that had taught me. But as we all know, uh, COVID-19 kind of upended everything in our world, and that event uh, never actually happened. Mr. Vanderkratz asked me uh, just a couple weeks ago, he said, we're doing this online um, fundraising drive, and would you be interested in, in still speaking, just on camera? So here I am. I feel quite confident that uh, what I had prepared uh, a couple months ago to share with you all um, is still relevant today. And as we celebrate Christian education and recognize uh, God in our lives and, and look for his fingerprint on all things, I hope that part of my story uh, can encourage you today and fits into those themes. I just want to take you with me for one second uh, back to 2001. Imagine with me that we're in the Calvin Christian School gym the room is packed, not like anything we experience these days, uh, but the, the room is full of Calvin community members, um, board members, and families, parents that are invested in Christian education. Myself and a number of my fellow students uh, are sharing why we think a collegiate is necessary at Calvin. Uh, we're expressing our desire to continue to learn in this environment. Uh, and the room is a bit tense. Um, there's a lot of emotion flying around the room at that time. But following our speech and some of the words that Mr. Taylor at the time shared and other staff members shared, uh, the vote was passed that there would be a collegiate at Calvin Christian School and that we would carry on with Christian education for grade 10, 11, and 12. And I am so grateful for the opportunity to have attended the collegiate and to have been able to be a part of uh, the beginning of, of high school um, experience at Calvin. So I just want to say thank you so much to all of you who participated in that vote, were there that day. Um, yeah, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to attend Calvin. I started uh, attending Calvin initially in 2001 at the beginning of my grade nine year. And during that time, uh, I was in not such a great place. Uh, my family had just recently returned from Burkina Faso, a country in West Africa, where we had been missionaries since I was a baby. And we had recently returned uh, just three years prior, since my brother had been diagnosed with life-threatening leukemia. And the three years prior to me coming to Calvin were filled with chemotherapy and radiation and multiple hospital stays. And thankfully, by the grace of God, he made it and is still in remission today. Uh, but we were just coming out of a really traumatic and difficult experience uh, when I started at Calvin. I was in a space where I needed nurturing, I need reassurance that I mattered in the world, and uh, some reassurance that, that God is still good even when uh, really bad things happen to good people. So it was a very interesting time for me coming into Calvin. But I walked through the doors and I felt safe. I met a community that was kind and I felt really supported um, walking into Calvin and starting uh, my grade nine year. I met friends who um, were welcoming and staff and teachers who uh, kind of wrapped their arms around me and said, you matter here and you belong. Uh, throughout 
my time at Calvin, uh, I experienced what it really means to look for God in all places, to, to search for his fingerprint on our life, um, to ask hard questions. So in those moments and times where we aren't sure where he is in the difficult times, to say, where are you, God? How are you trying to reveal yourself to us? And then also to celebrate those moments when we are able to see him. And I really think that that foundation served me so well um, throughout the rest of my life. My memories of my education at Calvin are punctuated with uh, lessons from Mr. Melnick and Mr. Jenniga. Uh, I think that that's kind of where my love of science and biology and, and math uh, started and kind of propelled me into my, into my work as a family physician. I remember particularly uh, one lesson Mr. Melnick was able to get some pig hearts and bring them to class, uh, and we gloved up, and we were able to um, trace the path of blood through this pig heart. And I... There, there's no doubt in my mind um, that that was kind of the first moment where I was like, wow, God, God is truly in all of creation. He designed this, um, this vessel and this organ to keep um, this being alive. And the pig heart is very similar to the human heart. And so I think in that moment, I was just like, God created every minute detail. Um, he created us with, with thoughtfulness and um, attention to detail. And I think that that is really where my, my love of the human body and how it works and my recognition that God is the, truly the creator of all things began. I have a fairly strong type A personality. And uh, so trigonometry was like right up my alley. A squared plus B squared equals C squared uh, in math class um, was very intriguing to me. And Mr. Jenniga did a great job of teaching us. Uh, and I just remember then, too, remembering that the God's in control, like somehow that equation reminded me that he understands that we need to be reminded that he is in control. Even though I wanted to be in control, he's the one that holds all the details of all of this. Not only uh, was my education really foundational for propelling me into uh, what I do now, but Calvin helped me through those awkward years of puberty uh, trying to figure out how you fit into the world. And I remember specific conversations with classmates and um, staff and teachers alike, just encouraging me to be exactly who God had created me to be uh, and praying that I would figure out who that was. I remember lessons about the grace and mercy of Jesus. And I, I truly think that that is, was also part of my foundation um, at Calvin, is just remembering that God... God is full of grace and full of mercy, and we can depend on that. And all of these things created a foundation that I really think I stood on going forward after my graduation from Calvin. After finishing high school, uh, I went into an undergrad at the University of Winnipeg and followed by um, medical school at the University of Manitoba. And through that time, I really depended on the foundation that I had learned at Calvin, specifically in medical school. It was a time that was filled with moments where I could clearly see God's fingerprint on my life. And as I learned about the human body and how it gets sick and is healed, there was no denying in my mind, similar to my experiences in biology class, that God holds all these things together. And uh, it was easy, easy to see his fingerprints on my life at that time. During that season, though, there were also moments that it was much more difficult um, walking through really difficult times with patients and difficult diagnoses and time spent in hospital. You just ask yourself, God, where are you in all this? And, and please reveal yourself to me, but also to the people that I'm working with. So that foundation of looking for God and where he's working um, was really important during that season in medical training. And also, I relied on the grace and mercy that I learned about uh, as I went through really tireless, or tiresome, I should say, tiresome hours uh, with uh, medical training, and then also learning to extend grace and mercy to those around me, um, listening to the nudges to offer a patient another blanket, uh, working with nurses, and remembering, having the grace to remember their names and and work with them, but also extending mercy to colleagues and supervisors that maybe weren't as kind as they could have been. So I stood on that foundation that I learned at Calvin and relied on it um, a lot during those years. 
There was one experience um, in the fall of 2018 that I'd like to share uh, with you that kind of really illustrates for me um, how I have come to recognize the fingerprints of God on our lives. And um, it happened just after I started my career as a family medicine physician. Uh, right now I work in Selkirk and I'm a family doctor there. Uh, so I look after patients in clinic, uh, but I also, if my patients are admitted to hospital, then I'm able to look after them there. And I have the privilege of delivering babies and doing low-risk obstetrics. So it's a pretty diverse practice. Um, but I remember in fall of 2018, I accepted a patient with a terminal diagnosis of cancer. Uh, she was in her 60s, and this diagnosis came quite suddenly um, for her and her family. It took them all kind of by surprise. I remember the day she was admitted to hospital because she could no longer cope at home anymore. And I remember her silver hair and her smile. Um, her granddaughter, who clearly adored her, um, looked me in the eye that night and said, uh, how bad is it really? And I hugged her and I said, it's not good. And those weeks that followed that um, admission uh, were long. Um, I spent lots of time with her family trying to help them cope through this difficult season and come to terms with what was happening to their mom and their loved one. There was one evening I was on call for obstetrics um, during that time that she was admitted to hospital. And uh, so I was at one end of the hospital and, and she was admitted at the other. And I had a delivery that went really smoothly. Um, there was no complications, and the parents were just delighted at the birth of their newborn baby. And I just felt such privilege uh, being a part of that moment with them and watching this baby take its first, first breaths. And so I finished up whatever was going on there, and the family was settled and getting used to their, their newborn baby. And I walked across the hospital to go see uh, my patient who was taking the last of her breaths here on Earth. And I slipped into her room. Um, her family had stepped out for a moment. And uh, I just sat quietly by her bed, um, took her hand and stroked it gently, and, and just sat there in the silence with her for a few moments. And, uh, and then I got up and said a quiet uh, good night, and I walked out of her room. And as I was driving home that night, uh, there was a really incredible sunset. Um, and I just really felt like God was saying, like, I am in all the moments of life from the very beginning to the very end, and my hand is on all the moments in between. Um, I stopped my car and uh, got out to watch uh, the last of the sunset where there was a few less buildings and I could see a bit more clearly. And I just remember being so thankful that I had the privilege of being a part of all of these moments and had the ability to recognize uh, God's hand in it all. And I prayed that I would be his hands and feet. Um, and I prayed that other people, too, would be able to recognize his fingerprints on their lives um, throughout all the stages of their life, in the good and the bad, um, and that the people that I come into contact with would recognize his hand on their life. Calvin had a really significant impact on me and really laid the foundation for me going forward, and I'm so grateful for that. My hope is that other students will experience the supportive ed education that I did and also will learn um, and experience and be able to stand on a foundation as they leave Calvin Christian School and Collegiate. Um, I'm so grateful for what it offered me, and I only hope and pray the same for many other people. Thank you. It has been my privilege to serve as the elementary principal for three years now at Calvin. And over that time, the board and the staff have met many times to talk about the future of our school. Some of the goals that we have are held in common with the collegiate campus, but some of them are unique to our elementary school. In terms of our elementary vision, we see the following results as achievable in the next five years. First of all, to keep developing young people into disciples of Christ. They should be open to following his way and be able to share the good news in active and practical ways wherever they go. Number two, to provide such an attractive in-class and out-of-class experience that our student retention rate climbs even higher. One way that we're looking at doing that is to upgrading our technology so that we can better meet the needs of our students. Number three, to explore the establishment of a Christian-based nursery school at our campus. 
This will result in a better service to support Christian families in the neighborhood, and ultimately, it will strengthen our kindergarten enrollment year after year. Number four, to be seen as a place not just for students, but also for families as they seek support to navigate important issues like cyber safety, student anxiety, nutrition, self-image, mental health, and many other ideas. And finally, number five, to develop a, a sense of unity with the collegiate so that our K-12 system is recognized and celebrated. In a nutshell, those are our visions for the next five years. Good evening. I'm Shannon Smith, Nee Plugman, and I'm principal at Calvin Christian Collegiate Campus. I'm what you call a lifer of Calvin. Uh, I was a student, a coach, I started my teaching career here, and now I'm in administration. Calvin Christian School has a long history of providing faith-based education, six decades. This is the foundation upon which we built the high school, the Collegiate Campus. We are in our 19th year of offering Christ-centered education. In 2002, we began our high school program with our first grade 10 class. And then we followed with our first grade 11 class and then grade 12. We are now planning our 17th grade 12 graduation. We're very encouraged by the way in which God has blessed our efforts here at Calvin uh, through the early years and now into the future. As a student at Calvin Christian in the 80s, I experienced the hopes and dreams of the founding fathers, of the school board, the administration, the staff, everybody, the volunteers, they carefully planned for the benefit of their students. What I didn't realize as a student was all the work that went on behind the scenes, the meetings, the fundraising initiatives, all for my benefit as a student. This God Prince fundraising campaign is one example of the care and passion our community carries for Calvin Christian. And the work that went into this event alone is staggering. Your generosity and time in prizes, sponsorships, and bids provides the much needed funds for Calvin Christian to operate and flourish. Thank you, Calvin community, for your servant hearts and your generosity towards Calvin. Go Calvin! Uh, what I do fondly remember as a student was how my teachers valued me and my opinions. I felt important and I felt respected. We regularly discussed what a Christian response to the world should look like. This practice is steeped in our teachings today too. We have continued to employ solid Christian teachers sharing their story as part of God's story. We have a culture of acceptance, encouragement, support, and excellence based in the Lord. As a school, we experience change every year. We grow, we learn, we change. What has remained the same since I was a student is our desire to explore, experience, and evaluate all of life under the Lordship of Christ. Now, as an administrator, I am on the planning end and I am privileged to do some of the dreaming of moving Calvin Christian into the future. We aim to be reflective about our Christian worldview in all our activities and academic studies. The teachers who teach here are dedicated Christian women and men. They wrestle daily with what it means to be genuinely Christian in what they teach and how they interact with their students. Out of our faith, we reach out to our community and beyond through service opportunities, and out of our faith, we worship together as a Christian educational community. Through developing a strategic plan with the elementary, we are striving to unify our campuses in approach, support, and community. We plan to strengthen transformative learning, to celebrate our identity in Christ, and generate excitement advertising God's goodness with our community while attracting more families. What this means for the high school campus is that our focus has been refined to deepen community and deepen learning by pouring into strengthening our character and our competence. Community, character, competence. CCC, Calvin Christian Collegiate. Jesus Christ is Lord over all areas of our lives, and especially in this context, 
He is Lord over education. This has remained our central and guiding principle. We are sobered and enthused by the responsibility of redeeming the educational enterprise for God's kingdom. It is an awesome thing to be in kingdom work for kingdom children. Good evening. My name is Hank Vandekratz, uh, past principal and head of school for Calvin Christian. And tonight we just uh, take this opportunity to celebrate. Over the course of the last 60 years, Calvin Christian has been richly blessed by God's goodness and God's faithfulness. From the core of Dutch immigrants who first envisioned a school that would seek to provide a Christ-centered education for their children, to our present-day community of like-minded parents from numerous denominations who seek to have their children become difference makers in God's world. We have much to be thankful for. Students, school administrators, staff, and our parent support community alike continue to reflect on all that God has made, the works of his fingers, and all that he has set in place, and how we, as the crown of his creation, are set apart to give glory and honor to our God and to rule over all that he has made, to be diligent kingdom citizens. Calvin Christian has prepared thousands of students toward that task of being kingdom citizens wherever they've been called to serve. So tonight, we invite you to celebrate God's goodness with a generous donation or with the purchase of one of the many auction items that have been so generously given to us and prepared by students or staff or by our generous donors. Your donation can be provided to the school by way of the envelope that you'll find in your package tonight or by way of an e-transfer to the school or a donation online. We're truly grateful to our support community and we thank you in advance for your commitment to the students and the staff of our school. Prayerfully consider demonstrating your support for Calvin Christian. Your support will make a difference. Thank you. We'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors. To our title sponsor, thank you, Fort Group Chartered Professional Accountants. Thank you to our Sun sponsors, Concord Projects and Regeers Printing. And thank you to our Moon sponsors, Workington Custom Homes. A year ago, we had planned for this banquet to be in a beautiful hall, downtown Winnipeg, and then COVID hit, and God changed things for us. And so over this past year, we have come to you uh, in, through these, uh, virtually through videos, uh, with the appeal to, again, just reflect on God's goodness over the last 60 years of Calvin's history. There are a number of people to thank and they're identified to you on the thank you page in your program. And we can't mention all by name, but we just want to give you uh, a real glimpse of, of just the number of people involved in helping to make this possible, from those who did videos, to those who did artwork, to the grade three, four choir, uh, all the way down the list, grade 12 students that have uh, given of their time, and to Phoebe Thiessen. We're grateful to our Father in Heaven for His goodness, and we pray that this uh, evening's program will be a true blessing to you, uh, and thank you as our support community. We're grateful for you as well. This evening's silent auction will close at 10 p.m. tonight, so please make sure that you double check on the bids that you put in before that 10 o'clock hour. And again, thanks for your participation in that silent auction. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord of all things, we give you the thanks and the praise tonight for your faithfulness and your love for us and for Calvin Christian School. Tonight we celebrate 60 years of opening the doors of our school to students. 
60 years of preparing them for service in your kingdom, Lord. 60 years of dedicated administrators, teachers, and support staff who have diligently worked alongside our students. We thank you for 60 years of parents who have faithfully served in various roles within the school community on boards and committees. 60 years of seeking to honor you, our Lord and our King, by the commitment of so many people to Christ-centered education. Thank you for all who have served. Thank you for each child who has walked through the doors of our schools. Thank you for all those who have committed their time and financial support. We seek your blessing as funds are raised tonight for the ongoing work at Calvin Christian. We ask this in the name of our majestic Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you. 